Welcome to online tutorial 12 and we've got here a little bit early haven't we because we're not quite there the weeks seem to have got knocked out of order and um, but I'm hoping everything for you is in order okay think about the feedback that you've received maybe you see it as being too brief maybe it's a little bit too cryptic for section 2 Several people have already contacted me because I had a, a pretty much broad invitation to everybody and now I'd say take that up through the Zoom sessions which you will have plenty of next week. Um, we've got our last workshop next Monday and in that workshop I'm really trying to prompt you into thinking through the process that you've been engaged in in maybe from a different perspective, right? Something that we've held back all the way through. So <clears throat> let's see where you get to with that. Obviously, if you can attend online, that's fine. If not, make sure you come back and you're, in, you're working through that session. It won't be a long session, uh, but we'll record uh, all of it for you. Make sure you watch that, especially in terms of section two, all right? And the general feedback that I've been giving people is that you need to sort of create the prompts in your own thinking, all right? Remember, I'm not asking you to tell me what you think. I'm asking you to have told me what your position is. But once you've done that, every time you place a why, think about using words like because I because you what? Ex use the next sentence to explain why you think and feel what you've just said. Not what. What would be justifying or continuing what you've just said. Why is trying to come under and under and under and under. All right? That's where the depth is. All right? By trying to deconstruct the previous sentence by using why, because, thereafter, to actually try to get inside of each center, not to continue. So I think that's maybe the biggest challenge, and it is not an easy process, right? Reflection isn't something that we all just naturally do. Otherwise, we'd be all incredibly self-aware, right? But we're not. We're actually quite the opposite, right? That's just the beauty of the human brain and the way it's structured, all right? So I am asking you to do something which is not natural, is difficult, and as I've said, if you've done it the right way, you should be feeling a little bit uncomfortable as a result of attempting to do it, okay? Remember in section one, the real key here that, and I'm sure people will still muck it up a little bit, is you got a thousand words, right? If you had 300 words or 200 words dedicated to your CPS statement in the first one, that was too many words, so you made a mistake there. Don't replicate the mistake by putting all of those words just straight across into the beginning. You're going to have to cut it down. Now, sometimes when people do this, they think, oh, I'm going to be really clever here. I'm going to revise and revise and revise it, make it even better before I bring it across, now knowing what my group's been thinking, now knowing where my thoughts have gone, don't do that. Don't do that. That would make life hard for you, right? When we read through section one, we have to look at what you've said in terms of your opening position. Where did you finish interim learning report one? Even if it's a bit convoluted and you've had to condense that down into two or three sentences, where did you finish? That's your opening CPS COS statement at the beginning. Once you get down to the bottom, not only are you going to give us your now revised CPS or COS statement, but you're going to finish, really important that you finish this way, read the rubric, look at the task instructions. You're going to finish by telling us how that new revised CPS or COS statement is more compelling and why, how it is more compelling than where you started at the top of the final learning report. So it doesn't make any sense to try and make the previous CPS statement much, much, much better because you're impressing nobody 
we're not going to go back and compare the two. The only comparison we're making is from the bottom of the page to the top of the page. So if, you, if your CPS statement was undone, if it was a bit crappy, if it really wasn't where it should have been, don't worry about it. Just make sure it's not too long, right? And then you'll have more opportunity to actually explain why what you've now done in reconfiguring things is more compelling, okay? Now, some of the other questions that I've been getting from people is, well, we didn't use a lot of financial capital last time around. We, we already tapped into energy. So what do we got to do? Find more, right? So you found the low-hanging fruit. You found the stuff that was pretty obvious for your thinking back then. Now you face the same challenge that everyone does. What additional sources of energy, what additional opportunities for co-actions do you think you could use to put your idea on steroids and take it to that next level, all right? Remember, the low-hanging fruit stuff, the stuff that would seem obvious to tap into is fine. If you're finding it hard to think about, well, what might be a deeper level of engagement with energy and co-action, just get back across to the other side and just say, well, if this idea was going fantastic, under what circumstances might that occur? And by doing that, you can then work backwards using a hypothetical bridge to get there. All right? So if you can imagine, well, this idea could be absolutely fantastic if all of those things happened, well, then come back to this side and use a hypothetical bridge to try and work out how to get those things happening in terms of co-action, in terms of energy, okay? Typically, once you've done that, you will have changed the balance of um, what's happening with your value creation logics, all right? Maybe you're using your value chain in a different way, your value shop in a different way. Maybe you're using the value network in a different way as a result of the increased throughput and, and awareness that's happening, right, for your idea, through that energy, all right? So just explain the nature of that dynamics that are happening there, all right? Is it about amplifying what you're already doing? Is it about changing the combinations of what you're doing, right? And as a result of doing all of that, you have to have changed aspects of your operational environment. And if you're going to make the claim that your new CPS statement is much more compelling than it previously was, then logically, your ecological dimension of the operational environment must be more dominant than whatever factors are present in the selective environment. Okay? It just stands to reasoning. You can't have a less attractive opera, uh, ecological environment relative to the selective dimension factors and claim that what you've now got is uh, more compelling. Because by using energy and coaction, you're tapping into things that are present in your ecological environment, which you may have not thought about previously, but you've now discovered, and as a result, you're bumping up the value of that ecological dimension, okay? So that's the sort of narrative that we're looking for, right? You've got an opening position that tells us where you started, your CPS statement, if it's concise enough, you don't need to tell us what your idea is, because your CPS statement will tell us that. There are these people who have this problem, we've got this solution, right? That's it. Short, sharp, concise. But now, having to go through this challenge, without financial capital, we're going to think about specific forms of uh, energy and co-action and see to what extent that might help us right, on this journey. Now, for many of you, the group's not quite, you know, it's lost its togetherness. And that's not really surprising, given that you don't have those sort of physical ties to keep things nice and, you know, you're not enjoying each other's company in the library or in the, in the botanical garden or in the bot bar or wherever you might, you know, normally find yourselves hanging out. It's sort of everyone in these connections and going off and doing their things. And I, you know, I look at my own kids going starting to go a little bit crazy from, you know, the working at home stuff, right? So not surprising that some of the groups will be a bit frayed around the edges, okay? So if you're in that situation and you thought, look, I can't wait for everybody and hope that they're all going to sort of come together back like we were, you know, seven or eight weeks ago, just write that. Write a note to myself and Marcia that simply says... I've done most of this last section 
without consultation with the group because the group wasn't able to meet. Okay? Then we know you're dealing with your own thinking and you're getting the thing moved on. Okay? So keep an eye out. Um, we'll have the portal to upload your assignment. It'll be open much earlier this time. Uh, but it's not open for you to upload and check your similarity. All right? There are four, several people that I've got to send an email to uh, to simply say, guys, that was a bit concerning what I saw in the first one. Don't do it again. So if you get that email, take on board that I'm trying to work with you and be fair. If I see the same pattern happening again this time around, then it's out of my hands and the university can solve the issue, okay? I'm talking like six students out of 240, all right? So for the vast majority of you, and I suspect those of you who are watching this um, uh, online tutorial, it's not an issue. If you know you wrote your own words, then don't worry about anything, right? We don't worry about headings. You're all going to have the same headings as everyone. We don't worry about that stuff, right? Back yourself. So if you want to get it out of the way and upload it, then that portal will be open um, very shortly and you'll be able to do that, okay? It'll be open after uh, the, the the last workshop, all right? That way we don't inadvertently, inadvertently say something in the last workshop and you think, oh, I need to change my... No, that'll be the last say. What we do in the last workshop will be the last say for the semester, all right? Um, Beyond the fact that people can drop into Zoom sessions, obviously, during that uh, during next week as well. So, um, by all means, if you've got an issue, you've got a problem, get in touch. Let's have a chat, all right? Remember, section one, it's simple. Allow it. Some of you put your work into quite a structured, almost like a report format that doesn't tend to lend itself to this. It's really four paragraphs. That's what you're really looking at, four basic sections. Um, you know, look at the guide to section one in the final learning report area of Blackboard, and that sort of gives you those four basic areas. And then you may have you may have dealt with an issue, but not substantively in terms of reflecting in the first uh, interim learning report section two. If you want to have another crack at the same issue, you know, this is what I've discovered that's new about me, right? There's nothing wrong with having another go at it, right? But you have that means you're going to totally do it differently, right? If I've sort of said you didn't go deep enough and you think that still is the thing that you've learned about yourself as a learner that's new, you can revisit it, but just make sure you take on board the feedback, which is it has to be about you. When you look at a paragraph any one of those seven paragraphs, yeah, there's some sort of contextual issues uh, that, that include other people that start off that paragraph. That's your position, right? But once you move beyond that, as you move down in those sentences, no one else is there. They can't be, right? Otherwise, we've gone from down and then we've gone back up to the surface, all right? Keep it about you, right? The last two to three whys should be just purely about why you think and feel the way you do relative to what you've just said in the previous sentence. All right? That's the challenge of doing it, right? That's the challenge. If you're still, if you start off by saying, I've discovered I don't like group work, it doesn't work for me, and you're still talking about group work across all of the paragraphs, then you didn't reflect on why you have a problem with group work, right? You're just going to keep talking about group work. That's the external factor, the contextual issue that should have been in. That's the, that's the issue, and then go inside it from your perspective. All right. If you're unsure about any of that, come along to the Zoom sessions next week, and we can have those conversations in more depth and as they relate specifically to what you're trying to discuss. Okay. All the best. Uh, I know it's been a really difficult semester in terms of continuity and in terms of just getting into the normal habits of doing things. Uh, overall, I was pretty happy with the type of work that came through uh, in the in the first um, in the first interim learning report. Put your best foot forward. Take on board the feedback. If you're unsure of the feedback, drop in on the Zoom sessions and get clarity around that. Um, but put your best foot forward, 
um, and we'll be looking to reward your work where you've actually followed the process. Remember, when the first class I said, follow the process, trust the process. Now, yes, I, I get that there will always be a large percentage of people in here say, ah, I didn't know what the process was. The process is there, right? The steps model video walks through the process of reflecting and you just need to take time to slow down and watch and listen to what's actually being said, okay? The guides for section one, for both the interim learning report and for the final learning report, explicitly and directly as it relates to the task instructions and the rubrics, explicitly state what you need to do. Now the key word, one last reminder, the key word for section one is integrated. Make sure you're using the terminology in an integrated way. It's not enough to use MG once. That's neither here or there, all right? You could be just telling us you're gonna think about MG. That's it. What is the MG and how are you using it? And every time you use MG, how does it relate to selection, right? How does it bring you greater cognitive legitimacy or greater socio-political legitimacy, all right? Think through how you're using these terms and what must be the then knock-on and connections to the other terminologies that you're actually using. That's what we're looking to assess in this report. Your ability to not only use the terms, but to use them in an integrated manner, okay? We had a pretest. do you know what the terms are? We had an interim learning report, can you explain an idea of value creation using these terms? And now we've got a revision of that idea, bringing in some more focus on energy and S specialist, generalist, those types of co-actions. And now we want those terms to be used in a more integrated way here, all right? Good luck, if you have any problems, hit me up, more than happy to have that conversation. And if you're uh, unsure about things, drop in on the Zoom sessions. Remember, with the Zoom sessions, you don't have to come on for the full half an hour. You can just drop in, ask a question, type in a question in the chat feature, and then exit, right? You can just come in and listen to what people are saying, right? And, and when I ask, you know, I might see you there, I might say, is everything okay? If you don't want to voice what you're doing, or you can just type in, hey, Kyle, I'm just, just listening. That's not a problem, okay? All the best. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with, and I'm looking forward to talking with you uh, on Monday. Uh, feel free to obviously jump in and ask questions as we're going through Monday in the class uh, and or during the Zoom sessions. All the best.